all the African men in the middle of dungeon who tried to separate myself. That's left that all the African men in the middle of dungeon who got sick and ill and weak were left there. You know, some of them even got blind. The English colonizers will leave them there until they died. And after they died, they picked their bodies and trashed them in the ocean. Hello guys, it's your boy Derek King once again. Welcome to my channel. As you know already how I always do it, I take you through the places of interest in our continent. And uh, today's video, I'm at the Cape Coast Castle, one of the largest castles in the history of the transatlantic slave trade. And then today, I'm going to take you inside, find out more and more about the history behind this establishment. Ah, uh, please, if you have any informations or places that you would want you would want us to visit i want you to leave that at the comment section and then uh if you also have any question relating to our tourism you can just leave it down in the comment section and then i promise to give you answers and then take you through your places that you want us to visit kindly subscribe to our channel and we promise to deliver the good nothing but the best you know as far as our tourism is concerned so come along with us we explore Built the Castle. 
the Alameda Council was not able for the transatlantic slave trade. That is why when you go to Alameda Council, you will realize that the dungeons there are different than the dungeons here. This one was built specifically for that purpose. And again, it was built at the peak of the transatlantic slave trade. The Portuguese in Alameda transported a lot of people to Europe without actually transporting Africans to the Americas until 1492. When this man called Christopher Columbus claimed he discovered the Americas. And when that part of the world was discovered, the Europeans realized that they called special king in that part of the world to produce sugar because sugar was very expensive. The Europeans named sugar white gold. Everybody wanted to produce white gold or sugar. So the Portuguese <coughs> In the Americas, realized that they would use the Native Americans there as cheap laborers. But because the Europeans introduced many diseases into the Americas that killed the Native Americans, there was a priest we called Bartolomeo de las Casas. He's a Spanish and a Catholic priest. He recommended that the Europeans should come for West Africans to the Americas to work as cheap laborers. And that was the genesis of the Chinese Atlantic slavery. This history is very convoluted. I can't see everything. And it's 400 years. And the tour is just 45 minutes. I'm going to pause here. In the process of the tour, I'm going to reveal a lot. Any questions, please? Now, this is the first chamber. Now, the first chamber had 200 men, there were 200 men here, and I made mention of five chambers. So, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, five means 1,000 men. That was at a peak system. At a base system, there were about 150 each one there. And the maximum number was 1,000 men. Those windows there were the only source of light to burn for the English organizers. But the male dungeon was known as the slave holes by the English organizers. They themselves didn't call this a dungeon, they call these slave holes. Right above my head stands a very big hole. We call that hole the map of the walls of the castle. And because the English organizers out there were very powerful. They always wanted to know whatever was going here. They traveled that way. So in case the African men tried to break the doors, the noise would just pass through that whole act. Because of that, the English organizers knew whatever was going on in the middle of that. Below that whole lies six holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Some African men went down to chains and shackles. They chained them so in order to restrict them from coming or moving closer. When the English colonizers came here, the smell was very bad to the fact that any time the English colonizers came in here for a few minutes and went out there, they did the smell like dead bodies of animals. It was truly strange that any time the African men passed by them to just go through and eventually get into the ocean. I am about showing you something that is going to change your lives today. Please come this way. I want to get there, you will realize that where we are standing right now has a lot of bricks. This is bricks all over. Don't you? It is nearly impossible to see bricks in the second, <coughs> third, <coughs> fourth, and the last year. However, the original floor of the entire main state dungeon are these bricks that we see. What you see out there is not the original floor. Slavery lasted over 300 years. It was a new dungeon that millions of enslaved African men definitely then slept here and ate in the way that later they died. Because of that, they had the composition of feces, urine, blood, food remains, and human remains formed that darkened floor and covered the priests. However, in the year 1974, a group of archaeologists came here and established the floor of only the first chamber. 
after excavation was initiated, the attacking floor that was excavated was gathered and transported to Accra for further examination to be initiated. After the examination was initiated, the archaeologists were fully convinced that this attacking floor contains traces of TV ingredients. But the archaeologists left that small portion as an evidence. This This portion. So after all these parts was excavated, this small portion I understand was left as an evidence. And this contains the full remains and DNA of people. This is the real evidence of the same African people here in the dungeon. I'm not So this place is the last chamber. Right there lies a small cell. That cell is different from the five chambers. All the African men in the middle dungeon who tried to lift, not all the African men in the middle dungeon who got sick and ill and weak were left to die. You know, some of them even got blind. The English colonizers who lived there until they died. And after they died, they picked their bodies and trashed them in the ocean. This is not part of the castle. When this castle was built, this wasn't here. And when the African men were here in the dungeon, this altar was not here. The altar was established after the abolishment of the Transatlantic State Trade. But it used to be a very big town, very huge town, right here. The town was the exit of the African men. So all the 1,000 men in the middle dungeon were not allowed to walk through where they came from. They were all forced to stand up to the door. The door of no return. But this tunnel system called seal off in the year 1834 to officially mark the accomplishment. But when you go out there, I'm going to show you the tunnel. It's big, it's even bigger than the dungeon of the men. Any questions, please? These are graves that were brought here by the global African diaspora to pay respect to the ancestors who died in the name of dungeon. This one. This one is on the bodies. Please just have a look at the We have a lot.
was the church on top of the male slave dungeon. The name of the church again is Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. Let me show the four identified groups, please. cheating on her with a black woman. There are others who claim that Leticia didn't commit suicide, but it was the black mistress of her husband who poisoned her. I believe in that one. Because after Leticia died in the bedroom of the husband, who was the governor then, the governor was still in a romantic relationship with his African mistress we call Helen Karaman. She died at the age of 36, he at the age of 38, the governor 46, and Philippe Poirot 75. West Africa was known as White Man's Grave because malaria killed many of them. Any questions, please? We have a lot to see. Cell we call the male punishment cell. You know, back in the male dungeon, I made mention of 1,000 men. The African men in the male dungeon who tried to fight back for their freedom and rights were brought here. All the African men who fought back were brought here. There are no windows in this cell. And these cells used to have three doors the first door, the middle, and the third door. There are no windows in the cell. I personally do not call this a cell. I call this cell the grave of the castle. Now, if you're a man in the middle dungeon and you try to fight back, they'll bring you here, they'll close the three doors, no food, no air, no light, no what, so you die. It's 
bloody and painful. Just tell us a lesson. Uh, basically, it's there are no windows here, no windows at all. Uh, there were three doors, obviously, from the first door, the main door, and the first door, and the third door, sorry. One, two, three, three doors, no windows. No back in the old dungeon, I mean, mentioned 1,000, and no here, there were no 1,000 in here, the 1,000 in the middle dungeon. Some of them tried to fight back. Such men were brought here to die, also killed. About less than eight men were brought here at a time. After they were brought here, the English colonizers who closed the door, the Lord of God, the Lord of No food, no air, no light, no water. So they all died slowly and painfully. So that means they were coming check you. Some people are there, take their bodies and dump them in the ocean. So we all died in the process. When I look up the lights out, I close the door. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question before you do yeah. that? What's, what's this for? Yeah, there was a door right there, but that door was sealed off to design a creative. Okay. 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 Well. okay. tunnel system but this is not the exit of the tunnel this is where the english colonizers would stand and urge the african men to keep walking through to the door we call the door of no return i'm going to show the exit of the tunnel but the entrance to the tunnel is where we saw the altar back in the middle of the now this is how you look at the tunnel system you watch your head first you take a step second you watch and you watch your head and you come out Please. <laughs> 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 Those of you fall down there, I don't know how you guys react. Ah, well. 
Você sabe o que eu vou Parece ser bom. Parece ser bom. Depois de parte do meu filho, ele disse que sim. Exatamente. Eu sou o meu amigo, eu sou o meu amigo. Eu sou o meu amigo. Transported all the enslaved African people, they didn't come to the castle. 
they're about 100 meters away from here. However, the English colonizers had small boats to bring the boats closer to the castle and force the Africans onto and transport them to the bigger, boat, bigger ships. In that order, all the enslaved Africans were shipped out to the Americans. That journey across the Atlantic Ocean from West Africa to the Americans is called the Bedouin Passage. It's scary and very dangerous. During that time, the English colonizers had 13 colonies in the US. Over 40% of all enslaved African people were being transported by the Portuguese. The Portuguese normally transported Africans to Brazil. That is why Brazil has a very large population of African people. Among the Europeans, all the Europeans that transported the Africans to the southern part of America were the very ones who transported the majority of the enslaved African people in the Americas. Today we are going to walk through the millions of our ancestors walked through and never came back to Africa. Some of them were taken to Haiti, Jamaica, Barbados, the US. Brazil, Mexico, and many more. Uh, English is this. Of the 
Some of cousins and Madame Prisa, they are very, they are skeletons. Are very as a place called Nassim Mansion Slave Riverside. That is where the majority of the Africans that were born here took their last bath. Because some of them were from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Ireland, because they walk. So when you go to Assam, you can clean in the room before they bring it to the show. Any questions, please? Now, uh, we are not done. I'm uh, going to take you upstairs. Let's go see the residence of the English family. This one. Going to the residence of the governor, so just come along. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I promise to give you more and more as far as the tourism in our country.
name of the church is Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. <laughs> Many years after the abolishment, the church became a children's library. Now this is the hall that is connected to the male slave dungeon. The English colonizers would worship and pray in the church, and the same people come right here and the African men in a male slave dungeon. We all do not know why. My wonderful families, this is where I'd like to end my presentation. Please don't forget there are three castles in Ghana. Elmina Castle, Musu Castle, and Kimbos Castle. Elmina Castle was built by the Portuguese in 1482. Musu Castle was established by the Danish in 1661. And Kimbos Castle was built by the English in the year 1665. I know slavery is still going on. And as a people, let's come together. Let's educate the younger generation. So they don't repeat the same mistakes our ancestors made many centuries ago, and the mistakes that they are still making. I truly appreciate your cooperation. My name again is Tony Wedi. Thank you very much. I wish all of you travel. Yes, thank you.